Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's time to begin service. Let's stand and go before the Lord and ask Him to move in our midst this evening. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity. Hallelujah. We thank you for this beautiful day that you have made. Thank you for everything you have done and everything you're going to accomplish in our hearts and lives by faith. Thank you, Jesus. Turn into your hymnal if you like to page 89, Glory. In his name, page 89.
many years. And we've been promising you we're going to get you some help. We're going to get you some help. We're going to get you some help. And God is blessing to where now that the church is growing and that now we're, we're kind of working uh, uh, some things differently and we want you to be praying because it's very important who's working with the children. Yes, sir. And, uh, and we want to make sure that when they come to the church that they're impacted in the right way so that they can grow up to love God and, to, and have fond memories Amen. of coming to church. Amen. And always remember like when I was a kid, I remember going to Sunday school and going to church and, and people took real interest in me, you know, and, 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 and impacted me in a good way. Amen. Of course, you, you always have these knuckleheads, but I'm talking about people who really impacted in a positive way. Amen. Amen. So, and that, and I appreciate the praise team. Amen. And and and, uh, and I believe that God is going to continue to bless that. It's going to get better. And everything else we have. Tomorrow. And please pray. We want to get a youth, uh, kind of a youth group together, youth team together. People who work with the youth. Amen. My wife and I, of course, will be involved, but we want people who uh, are interested in young people, amen, and, and we want to start trying to do some positive things with them in the church, outside the church, uh, just different things, amen, and teaching them about God, but allowing them to grow up in a positive atmosphere, amen, so that they can become what God wants them to become. Amen. And so we want to do that. And there's just so many different things. And, uh, uh, and so we're, we're, we're working on a lot of different things. So please be much in prayer. Remember, I want to emphasize this before we minister tonight. Prayer meetings, and I want everybody to, to, to remember this. Prayer meetings are every other Thursday. Okay, now um, it's hard to say we're gonna do it like we like we tried that with the Bible study. We're gonna have the second and the fourth, and then you get five Tuesdays and and, uh, and then it grows off. So what we're gonna do is just alternate them when they're to be alternated. We'll just do it that way, and so because sometimes we have five Thursdays, five Fridays, you know you have. So some and so to say what we're gonna do second Tuesday, first Tuesday, we'll just do it every other Thursday. We'll have a prayer meeting and then the following Thursday we'll do practice. Okay, we'll just do it that way and we'll let it work how it needs to work. And we're gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna just change that up with the Bible study out there because sometimes things get thrown off. Like yesterday was not was not the same. But because it was the way the, 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 the days fell. So I'm just saying it. So we have to be, you know, it's a, a, a learning thing too. Trial and error. And uh, we're just trying to be conscientious of things. Uh, and I'm just so, my wife and I are incredibly blessed and thankful to be able to work with God. And uh, God is, is, is in control. God is in control. So you be much in prayer, okay? Um, I'd like to minister to you from the, the, the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. And um, I'm going to do a little bit of reading, so forgive me ahead of time for that. But I believe that it is necessary to accomplish what we want to get accomplished tonight. And uh, I'm so thankful for, as we get ready to read Mark chapter 5 and, and verse 1 through where I'm going to stop. Um, the Bible study last night, how God really blessed about the blind man and, and this different things uh, about how Jesus took the blind man, took him by the hand, number one, 
led him out of town, number two, spat on his eyes, number three, and then opened. Right? I call it a spiritual conglomerate. Um, that one verse of scripture, that one verse of scripture had all of that in it. I mean, Jesus did all that for that one, that man in that one verse. Amen. And, and uh, how that God can do so much for you in a short time. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to believe. The, the thing of the Bible said last night about trusting God. You know, we have to trust God. We have to commit our life to him and believe that he's going to take care of it. And stop playing around with it. And just let it be. All right? Mark chapter 5. And they came over unto the other side of the sea in the country of the Gadarenes. The Dara. The Dara. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. All right, a man. So Jesus comes on the scene and out steps a man with an unclean spirit, with the devil in it. All right? He had really more than one. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll share that with you in a minute. You ever wonder why some people act the way they do? Some people live the way they do? Some people uh, live their life the way that they do? You know why? Because they have the devil in them. They have the devil in them. How else can you explain some things? How else can you explain it? But anyway, verse 3. Now, Remember now, he, he, he was among the tombs. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man uh, could bind him. No, not with chains. So they tried to chain this man, but they couldn't chain him. They couldn't bind him. He's running around out there. In the, in the cemetery, and among the tombs. You know he can't be in his right mind. What person in their right mind would live in the cemetery? You can't be in your right mind. Because that he had been all bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. No man could tame him. So obviously there have been a number of people who maybe they deemed was capable of subduing this man, of taming this man, or maybe arresting this man, or maybe getting him to the point to where they could get him under control and keep him from disturbing the community or disturbing of, of the atmosphere of the area. But it did no good. The Bible said neither could any man tame him. And always, verse 5, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stone. You thought these young people cutting themselves with something new? That ain't nothing new. This man and this man was doing this back during the time of Jesus. Cutting himself because he was not in his right mind. And I'm not here to disparage people who have mental illness and who, who do things like that, but at the same time, when you harm yourself, it is clear, it is clear that you are not in your right mind. You can't be. And that's a fair assessment. It, it really is a fair assessment. But when he, now, 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 sister, sister, um,
Sister, um, I'm having a good time. Sister Carl, I want you to notice something. Now, the previous verses I read to you are dark, they are grim, they are negative. This man was in a bad way. Think about it. That the picture that was just painted of this man was not pretty. I mean, he's out there in the, in the cemetery. He's not in his right mind. He's running around out there. And he really doesn't have clothes on either. <laughs> he doesn't have clothes on. They try to chain him. They try to subdue him. And all that he's cutting himself with stones. He's in bed. And they, they tried. The Bible said no man could tame him. So there were undoubtedly people in the community that they assumed could do this. But to no avail. But then I read all of that to you, right? <laughs> it's amazing to me. And then one last thing I want to share with you. The Bible said he had an unclean spirit. We can't forget that. He had an unclean spirit. That was the culprit. Right? That's the culprit. When you don't do what you're supposed to do, when you don't live like you're supposed to live, when your attitude is not the way it's supposed to be, you have to be driven and motivated by an unclean spirit. Do you not know all sins are a spirit? Sin, all sins of whatever it is that you're doing is a spirit. Alright? But anyway, but I, as I was studying this and looking over this, we appreciate people that are watching online. God bless you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for uh, joining us. Thank you for liking and subscribing and sharing if you're so inclined to do so. But I want to say something to you tonight. And I know I'm just doing a Bible reading. And I know I probably drive some people crazy. Because most of the time you just read your Bible reading and then get into the preaching. But I'm the kind of preacher that when I'm doing my Bible reading, I like this flame thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I like to. I guess, and I know I probably should just read through it real quick, but as I'm reading it, I, I guess it's just I'm goofy, okay? And I guess that's what makes me who I am, right? And so if I was to change that, you'd be like, that's not a real word. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes, what's that? Was like, no, go change it. You know? <laughs> what's that? Spirit of joy? That, that's spirit of joy, I believe. Not that we're here to promote him. But sometimes it's not necessary. You don't need you need to be who you are, right? But anyway, but verse 6 happens. Oh, hallelujah. I'm preaching on come out of the man. Thou unclean oh, spirit. Man, I feel the spirit oh, of God. Hallelujah. You know when I have something going on inside of me. That's not right with God. You need to address it. Quit making excuses for why you're not doing right. Quit making excuses for why your thinking is off. Quit making excuses for why you, you have something going on in your life that you're fighting with, struggling with, wrestling with, and just say, come out of me. Now I pray God tonight. Oh, oh glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We thank you tonight. Oh, glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. Come out of the man. Come out of us. Thank you, Jesus.
may be all messed up. I may be in a bad way. My life may be in a situation to where it's spiraling out of control. But it's something about when Jesus walks on the scene. Oh, hallelujah. It's something about when I present it with God. Look at how things flipped on the dime. Look at how things change. It's amazing how when God really does come in, you really do change. It's too many people unchanged in church. It's too many people not changed in Christianity. But if Jesus really walks on the scene, something is going to happen. And verse 6 happened. I should preach on that. Instead of preaching on, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. I need to preach on verse 6. Lord, I'm glad that when I was lost and on my way to hell, I'm glad that when I was doing wrong, I'm glad when I was hurting myself, I'm glad that when I was doing hurt and harm to other people, verse 6 happened. I, I said, Somebody has a dead lesbian, a lifestyle, somebody. 
Bible say, brother, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had legions. So was and had. Huh? It's amazing how when you meet Jesus, your the things will be in the past. Huh? I was a sinner. I had a devil. Are you with me? He was cutting himself. He was naked. He was trying to be tamed up. But then he broke the chains up. He was freaking high. But when Jesus walked on the scene, they sang. Oh, hallelujah. And they come to Jesus. And they see him that was possessed with the devil. And had the legion. Sitting. Uh, when did you when, there's no place in those initial scriptures where he was sitting down he was the bible said day and night he was running and wreaking havoc and moving and, and doing things uh, but it's amazing how Jesus will calm you down uh, how Jesus will sit you down uh, he'll make you sit down uh, so you can listen uh, he'll make you sit down uh, so you can learn. Uh, he'll make you sit down uh, so you can be instructed. Uh, he'll make you sit down uh, and see the arrow on your ways. Uh, he'll make you sit down uh, and obey. Uh, he'll make you sit down uh, so that you can be what you ought to be. Uh, but you can't do that uh, constantly running around uh, and doing this and doing that. Uh, it's time to sit down uh, and listen to God. Oh, hallelujah. And the Bible says when Jesus was done with it, he was sitting clothed, huh? And what? In his right mind. And the Bible said they were afraid. You know, that's how people are when, they, when you get right with God. They don't know what to say. When you get right with God, they, they all of a sudden, uh, they're afraid now. Amen. What, 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 what is it now? Come out of the man. Tonight in this service, I dare you to proclaim. I dare you to believe. I dare you to say, come out. Uh, uh, come out of me. Uh, God, I got things in my life that I need to change. Uh, those of you that are listening online, uh, if you're battling with something, uh, if you're struggling with something, uh, be like the man in the Galileans. Uh, when Jesus came on the scene, uh, when you hear the gospel message, uh, when somebody witnesses to you, uh, that's Jesus uh, coming on the scene. Uh, and immediately, uh, his whole life changed. Uh, the Bible said he worshiped Jesus. Uh, it's amazing how he went from running around, telling himself, and doing all that. And once he came in contact with Jesus, uh, it was a whole different story. That's how I know uh, that Jesus is real. That's how I know uh, that being saved uh, really does change people. Uh, for every man did Christ. Uh, he is a new creature. Uh, all things are passed away. Uh, and behold, uh, all things are uh, become new. A story that I heard about a, a lady took a child down to swim in this body of water. And uh, 
There was a strong man standing on the, just standing there on the bank, watching and observing. He was a very, very uh, great swimmer, uh, known by the people. But he was just out there, just observing and watching. And this lady's child went out to the water and it went out too deep. And the child was commit, commencing to drown. And the lady was screaming and hollering at this man. Save my child. My child is drowning. Save my child. And the strong man was just standing there. The child was up, screaming and kicking and hollering. And then come back up and screaming and then go back up. Then the child came back up. And, and finally, the child got tired, and finally, the, the arms and the legs stopped moving uh, because the child got tired. Uh, and then the strong man jumped out into the water uh, and saved the child. Uh, and then, uh, when they brought the child in, uh, the mother was so happy, uh, and the mother was so pleased. Uh, but she said to the strong man, uh, Why did you wait so so late. Why did you wait for my child? My child to the ground. The strong man said, I had every intention of saving the child, but I had to wait for it to quit fighting. Because if they if they're fighting, they can take me down with them. But if they're not fighting, it's easier for me to go in and get them and bring them in. You want God to save me. You want God to deliver you. But you got to quit fighting. You got to quit resisting. You got to quit standing against what just happened. And that happened. And Jesus is the eternal Savior. He's the eternal strong man. But he's waiting on you to quit fighting. And then he'll throw you the lifeline. Um, how about it tonight? Come out of the man. Yes, this man was demon possessed. Yes, he was running around the tombs. Yes, he was cutting himself. He was out of his mind. He was wreaking havoc in the community. He could not be tamed. They tried to chain him up and he would just break the chains and the veterans and everything. And everything was just completely out of control. And they could do nothing with him. And all of a sudden, Jesus walked on the scene. And when Jesus walked on the scene, his attitude and his everything completely changed. It's an, I don't care what you're doing tonight. I don't care how deeply involved you are. I don't care if you're involved in spiritism. I don't care if you're involved in witchcraft. I don't care if you're involved in necromancy. I don't care what you're involved in. You're involved in drug activity, crime, and, 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 and gang activity. I believe that when Jesus comes on the scene, that real change will happen. I believe that lives can be turned. Up. I want you to notice this one more time. Verses 1 through verse 5 is grim. Verses 1 through 5 is ugly. But then verse 6 happens. I said verse 6 happens. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped. Huh? When was the last time you ran and worshipped? It's amazing how all of a sudden he wasn't interested in running around the tombs. He wasn't interested in breaking chains. All of a sudden he wasn't interested in those things because he had found someone that could help him with his problem. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Way back on Calvary, oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Hallelujah. The 
just come and pray. 